Hello everyone, this is Vaini. Welcome to your Tech Minds Tutor. In previous video, we have talked about how to create sets in Python. Now, in this video, we will see what are the different functions or methods that we can use with the sets. So, without any further delay, let's get started. In the last video, I told you sets are mutable. That means we can add element in the set. We can also remove elements from the set. So, first, let's see some methods that we can use to add element to a set. So here two methods available. First is the add method that we can use to add only one element at a time. But if we want to add more than one element, say we want to add three elements or four elements or five elements at a time. In that case, we can use this update method, right? Now let's see the method that we can use to remove element from the set. So here four methods available. Uh, remove, discard and four methods will remove only one element from the set at a time. And we can use clear method if we want to remove all the elements from the set. Here in remove and discard method, we have to pass the element or the item that we want to remove from the set. Right? It, this method will remove that element from the set. But if the element or the item that we want to remove is not present in the set, in that case, this remove method will give an error. Uh, but discard method will not give any error. Right? So this is the difference between these two methods. Now, the pop method will not accept any argument in the braces. That means it will remove any random item from the set. Right? Now, say if we want to remove set from the memory, in that case, we can use del keyword. We can use this del keyword to remove any object from the memory. Whatever object we give here after this del keyword, that object will get removed from the memory. Right? So, if we pass set here, it will remove set from the memory. Now, let's see some functions that we can use with the sets. We have used these functions with the tuples or and list too. You know that len method is used to know the length of the object. So if we uh, pass set here, it will give the length of the set, right? And we can use sum function if all the elements of the set are numeric. Then it will give the sum of all the elements of the set. And min, max and sorted method is used if all the elements of the set are either strings or, or, or numeric. Right, so you have to take care of this. Uh, now let's get to PyCharm and understand these methods practically. Now let's see methods that we can use with the sets. We know that methods are used only with the object. So we are using set as here. Now first let's see the add method. Add method is used only to add one element to the set. So we have to pass element here. Element must be immutable type. So we can pass only immutable I items here. So I am passing a string here. Now let's print the set as now if we run it we can see the result here right we can see the hello is added to the set now let's pass something else let's pass integer here we run it we can get the result here 99 is added to the set now if we pass tuple here tuple is also mutable Uh, if we run it, we can see the whole tuple has been added to the set because add method will add only one item. So the whole tuple is added to the set, right? Now let's say if we pass uh, list here. So list is not immutable or we can say list is a mutable type. So that means it will give an error. So it will give us type error because when the add method will add the whole list to the set, that time it will give an error because the list is a mutable type and mutable data cannot be added to the set, right? So you have to take care, you have to pass only the immutable types. And let's pass Boolean data. Now, if you run it, now this time this data will get added to the set, right? Now, let's see the update method. Update method will add uh, more than one element at a time. So you have to pass more than one element. That means you have to pass only iterable type data here. Iterable types means string, list, tuples, dictionaries, right? Uh, collection type data you have to pass in this process. So if you pass strings, we know that string is also a iterable type. Now if we run it, we can see the item of these iterables are uh, added to the S, right? Now we can see H E L L four items are added to this set at a time right now let's pass list here now this time it will not give an error 
because here list is not going to get added to the set s instead the items of this list is added to the set s with the help of the update method now if we run it we can see um 9 8 and 99 right now let's pass tuple here now this time we know that the whole tuple will not get added items of this tuple get added to the set but uh, all of these items are already present in the set and we know that set will not take duplicate that why all of these items are discarded right so if we pass something else here now this time if we run it all of the items get added to the set right so we can pass only iterables here now let's see methods to remove items from the set now first let's see the remove method uh, let's say if we want to remove true from this set s now uh, let's make both of these statements comment now if we run it we can see that the true has been removed from this set right so we have to pass the data that we want to remove from the set right now there is one more method that is discard method it also removes the uh, data from the set now if we pass 7.5 here now this method will also remove the data now you can see in the result true is removed with the help of remove method and 7.5 is removed with the help of discard method now both of these methods are similar uh, but you can see the difference when you pass uh, something that is not present in the set now let's say if i pass hello that is not present in the set right now let's make it common to see the difference now if we run it we can see uh, the error key error that means this is not present in the set now uh, let's use the discard method let's make it comment now if we pass hello here we know that hello is not present in the set s now if we run it it will not give any error the set is displayed as it was earlier before this method right uh, now let's see the pop method this method will not take any argument right it will remove any random item from the set now let's make it comment now if we run it we can see that from this set s uh, two has been removed right so it will remove any item from the set so first difference is that it will not take any argument and the second difference between the pop method and these two method is that this pop method will return the item that it removed from the set whereas these two method will not return anything now to check this let's uh, print this now if we run it we can see that this method is returning true right now let's say if i print this method now let's pass something that it remove that pass six here now if we run it we can see that this method is returning nothing that means showing none type right so all of these method will return nothing they will return none right whereas the pop method will return whatever it removed from the set right that's why we have got true here now let's see next method that is clear method clear method is used to remove all the items from the set now if we are using s here so uh, all the items from the set s is removed now if you see that here uh, we are printing s now this is showing empty set that means all the items of this set s are removed right now say we want to remove the set from the memory in that case we can use del keyword so after del if we use set here now if we run it then this statement will give an error because this s has been removed from the memory that's why this is giving name error right so this is how we use these methods now let's see the functions that we can use with the sets so first let's remove all of these methods now first let's see the len function this function will give the length of the object so if we pass s here it will give the length of the set s now to see result we have to put it into print function now if we run it we can see six that means six items are present in this set now let's see another method that is sum 
Now this sum function can be used only with the numeric data types. Here S contains only numeric data. Now if we run it, this function will give sum of all the items, right? That is showing 30.5. Now if you use this function with the S1 that contains string, then this method will give an error, right? Now let's see another function that is max function. Max function will give maximum of the data. Now, if we pass S here, S contains all the numeric data, then it will give the maximum of this data. It will give 7.5, right? Now, say if we pass S1 set here. Now, S1 set contain only the strings. Now, it will give the maximum of the strings, right? But say if you use uh, any data other than the strings, let's say if I use tuple here. Now, at this time, it will give an error because it will not be able to find the maximum between the strings and the tuple, right? So you have to take care of this. Now, mean function is similar to the max function. It will give the minimum of the data. Now here, if you use with the S1, it will give minimum of the strings, that is apple. Now, if you use with the set S, it will give the minimum of the numeric data, that is true, right? Now, next function is sorted function. Now this function return a list that has items of this set arranged in ascending order. So if we pass S here, it will give the list in which all the items of set S are arranged in ascending order. Now say if you want to arrange in descending order, for that what you have to do, you have to pass one more attribute here that is uh, reverse. Now here in this reverse, you have to put the value true. Now, if this value is true, that means it will arrange in descending order. Now, if we run it, we can see the list that is arranged in descending order, right? This is how all of these functional methods are used. That's it for now. If you really like the video, hit the like button, subscribe the channel. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.